Hello, welcome to this afternoon hack. I have this ATtiny85 on this carrier board, this speaker, and this tiny little microphone right here. And I'm going to see if I can turn this into a loudspeaker system. You could use something called an operational amplifier, but I want to see if I can just do it with an ATtiny85 using the differential timer outputs. Not quite sure how loud it will be, but it's worth finding out. Who knows, maybe this could be used for some other project in the future. The thing that inspired me to do this project was this thing over here on TwistedSanity.net, a Class D microcontroller amplifier. And uh, it's really geared for being more of a high power amp with a bunch of other components. And doing so, it's, it's a really neat project, but it's, it's not really geared in the same direction I want, which is to have the simplest project possible. But it does also use the ADC input and the PWM outputs that I'm going to be doing on this project. The ATtiny85 has some interesting features. It's got the ADC inputs, and it's got these interesting uh, inverted PWM outputs. So I can have a PWM signal, which means that it'll be on and off and on and off, and if you average it out, it'll cause basically an analog signal. One of the really neat things about the ATtiny85 is that the speed in which the counter can be in incremented for PWMs can be very, very fast, around 100 megahertz. So if you have a 100 megahertz signal and you divide it by 256, which is the number of increments that you could change the width of this, you get around a 500 kilohertz output PWM wave, which is crazy high and the speaker will just largely ignore. So if the signal is off more than it's on, on the regular output, then the speaker will go out. And if it's on more than off, the speaker will go in. That's also because it's helped out by having the inverted output, which helps push this, this, this output potential even higher. First, I'm going to go solder some wire onto this microphone right here so I can hook it up to the carrier board. The way that these little microphone thingies work is they provide a current that that will pull the line down. So what that means is I can use a resistor to pull back on it. So I can take this little tiny resistor here, it's 15 kilo ohms, and this, this red line is hooked up to 5 volts, and I can probe the voltage across the microphone. And right now it's reading 2.13 volts. That means when there's no sound at all, it'll be making 2.13 volts, which is a voltage inside the range that the AVR can, can read. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this little resistor right here between VCC and PB2, which is an analog input on the AVR. Now I'm just going to take the microphone and the speaker ends right here. I'm going to screw them into place on the terminals. Okay. I would say our hardware here is done. Time to go write some software. One thing I think it might make sense to do right now is take a look at the sine wave coming off of this uh, PB2. So I'm going to go probe PB2 and I'm going to go look at the oscilloscope here. So right there, that is, uh, actually it's disconnected right now, okay, let's reconnect it. That is about 2.2 volts, and if I talk into the microphone, you can see the signal on the oscilloscope. Okay, that's a lot of fun. I don't know why I like oscilloscope so much. Ooh. Okay, uh, I think it's enough fun for right now. Okay, I just programmed it. There is sound coming out of here. It doesn't sound right. It sounds a lot lower than I think it should be. Right there. And look at the scope and hope I see something. So there is a signal on here, as I can hear it. I'm not sure what I'm looking at though. That's particularly confusing. It looks like the div is roughly 100 hertz. 
So maybe 120 hertz. So something's really wrong that the frequency is off by that much. And I'm not really sure what the sound we're hearing is. So let's check the other pin. That looks very different. Hmm. Gonna have to go look at the code a little bit more to see, uh, data sheet a little bit more to see what could be going wrong here. Okay, now it's a lot louder, and the signal makes a lot more sense. Though there's still a lot of squiggles all over the signal, you can actually probably zoom in and see the, the FCK on it, and that's pretty high. Still doesn't quite look right, but whatever. You do see a nice triangle wave. It is going down in value instead of up. There could be something wrong there, but let's just play around with this. What that'll do is it'll produce a triangle wave instead of a sawtooth. Ooh. It's a very nice, smooth sound. Probably can't hear it very well. Okay, I'm just going to say make now, I'm going to actually plug this back in, it's still doing that stupid sine wave, and let's see what happens. Hello? Hello, 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 hello. Okay, I can sort of hear it. You can see that it, it is totally changing the visual effect, and it's, uh, it's working. It just looks terrible on the oscilloscope. By talking to here, you can kind of hear it, so it's... Hello, 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 hello. Okay, let's see if we can bump up the volume. Hello. It looks like, uh, with a little bit of that algorithm there, it now works. So, you can hear it. It sounds a little terrible, but it totally works. So, AT Tiny 85, sorry, AT Tiny 85, speaker, microphone. And that's really all you need in order to make a loudspeaker. You know, maybe the reason it wasn't loud enough was because I wasn't using a big enough speaker. There is one warning. Yeah, there is one warning with all of this. That's that uh, you're actually outputting a lot of very high frequency signal. That can damage speakers if they're smaller, and uh, especially if they're tweeters. Uh, I really don't care about the speakers, so it's a lot of fun. Okay, I think I'm actually done this time.